Hello, Bomboy8 here with another Alchemy Stars guide video. In this video, we are going to look at the four and five star units in the game that I feel give you the best return on investment. Uh, units that you might have access to early on that can help you carry your earlier teams and that will continue to provide value as you transition into the late game. We're going to focus on the four and five stars specifically because I feel in Alchemy Stars that all of the six star units uh, provide some value. You're going to get long term value out of them unless they are Connolly, who is just really awkward to use still and could desperately use a buff. Please buff Connolly. So I'm going to focus on the ones that I have used and continue to use. And I wanna be upfront about this disclaimer. This is not the end all be all guide to four and five star units and alchemy stars. Being a gotcha game means that I have not had equal time and resources to spend on every unit in the game to play around with them a bit and form an educated opinion about how this unit performs in the game. So I am focusing now on units I have actually used at some point and continue to use now. So let's talk about our first set of similar kits represented in each of the four elements by a different unit. We're going to start with local conversion units. This is what I call units that convert the nearest four or five tiles of the same color into a different color. Here we have Faust, Klecken, Beverly, Impact. Faust and Klecken are very similar. Uh, they both have a decent detonator chain combo range with a fright based passive that can help mitigate some damage. Faust can target anything, but it's a random chance. Kleckens is a guarantee, but it's only things that are nearby and below a certain health total. Beverly has a bit extra damage on her equipment passive, but it's not really something you think about. It just sometimes happens. Pact probably has the most situational equipment in the game, requiring you to hit something with her really awkward chain combo pattern, and that's something to also be standing on a green tile. If you do, they get slowed. Uh, when they die, they convert something to enhance, which is okay. And you get a good little chunk of healing. And as awkward as it is, this little healing can matter uh, in later content. Our next set is our cross converters. Uh, much like local converters, these are units with lackluster stat lines and amazing conversion output. Um, all of these units have an active skill that will attack in all four directions away from the unit, dealing damage, pushing enemies to the edge of the board, and also converting all tiles along the way, allowing you to set up some of your biggest combo turns off the back of these skills. Cross converters include Maggie, Nemesis, Scare, and Barton. Uh, Maggie and Nemesis are more or less the same. Maggie having more of a detonator style attack where Nemesis is more of a sniper. However, they both have equipment that is nice, but more or less ignorable. Uh, Barton is a strange one for me. I don't have much personal experience with Barton because I've only ever opened one and cross converters are a unit that are very reliant on their breakthroughs to be efficient, especially in higher content. Um, that being said, if you have a Barton, I definitely recommend investing in him because all the cross converters are useful through all content in the game. Um, I can say that Barton does have diagonal attacks on his passive, which is almost always good for increasing damage output for the individual unit, as well as the team via the normal attack multiplier. The special unit here is Scare. Scare has a defense ignoring passive. After she's hit a unit once, all further hits will ignore that enemy's defense. And the way defense works in Alchemy Stars, 
Uh, you take the attack that you deliver to an enemy, you subtract the enemy's defense, and that, and you get your final damage. And so that means the ability to completely ignore defense ignores a lot of reduction in damage and allows a unit that would normally have very weak attacks due to her stat line actually have a relatively decent uh, contribution to the team's overall damage output. The next set is not a full set and that is because it is our chain combo doublers which Thunder does not actually have a unit for this classification at this time. Uh, these are Istavan, Hydrad, and Louise, and all three of these units, when their active skill goes off, it doubles all chain combos that proc this turn by units that share an element with them. So these go very well in teams that are all one element. Uh, they all have the exact same active. It has another decent chunky cooldown, so once again, breakthroughs are very helpful. The passives make a small difference, but you're not bringing them around for their passives. Uh, Istvan will reduce nearby attack after he does a chain combo. Hydrad will deal some damage in retaliation whenever a unit attacks you. And Luis, actually Luis has a noteworthy passive because anytime you activate Aurora Time, Luis will give you a little chunk of healing. And like I kind of mentioned with Pact, uh, later on in the game you don't have a spot for dedicated healers. And so these healing effects that aren't on pure healers um, just give you a little extra cushion uh, while you're trying to do a higher content. The last set worth mentioning are the healers in the game. Uh, Alice, Nadine, uh, Uriah, and Phyllishai. Uh, Alice, Nadine, and Uriah are all four-star healers. Their, uh, their chain combo is a healing ability, and they have an active skill that can also provide some healing and some additional utility. Alice gives you a shield that heals for a percent of the damage that you are dealt by your next uh, by the next attack you receive. Nadine will turn a tile yellow for two turns and while also providing you healing while you go over it and a blinding effect that is very random and very unreliable. And Uriah will offer you very frequent active healing that also procs anytime she, uh, anytime you get Aurora time. All of these are nice little units that in addition to healing, bring some utility. And so you're always going to have a spot for them until you get to content where you really need to maximize your damage output, in which case these units start to drop off in their usefulness. An exception here you'll notice is Phyllishai is the only five star in this category. Uh, Phyllishai is probably my single favorite utility unit in the game. She is amazing. She has an accessible teleport that will heal and give you a shield. Her chain combo heals every turn. Can uh, She's a five star, so she has a second element, which means that anytime you make a line with fire, she also heals. This is really important because usually your off color damage, you'll only deal 30% of that damage that doesn't affect healing. So she'll heal for 100% when she goes across water or fire. And honestly, a decent attack that increases as she loses health. So just all around an incredibly useful unit that is available with some other perks for $1 at the start of the game. If you are enjoying Alchemy Stars and you don't mind spending a little bit on it, this is the best $1 you can spend in the game. It is an amazing deal for a unit that I just continue to use over and over again. So we're gonna move away from sets and just move on to independent units that provide long-term damage value uh, throughout different stages of your experience with the game. The first and easiest to talk about is Vice. Vice is the 
free unit you get through the story and you also get breakthroughs through the story and she is really good you might be coming from another gacha game and are used to the welfare unit being all right but you something you easily grow out of whereas vice provides good multi-target abilities with her active and her chain combo and continues to be useful well through the mid game and if you don't get a better water sniper you can really end up using her for a while and not really feel the pinch as it were uh, next i have aria well let's, first of all let's get this out of the aria is great she deals a ton of damage um on very specific turns of your choosing which is perfect because a lot of times in Alchemy Star, you are setting up your big damage turns. You're not dealing big chunky damage each turn unless the boss has some gimmick that you need to get around. And so the fact that Arya has less attack following her big attack, it doesn't matter because all you really care about is that big damage turn where you swing in with her and you have Luis to double the damage that turn and she just hits like a truck uh to start with she's a little lackluster she definitely gets better the more you put into her and so i definitely recommend investing in her as soon as you are able to schwartz is Maybe a little bit more uh, controversial. I'm not sure if everyone's going to agree with me on this, but I've seen people clearing higher rank Spire content, floors 80 to 90, using Schwartz. And I think he's a great unit because on his active skill, he deals a pretty decent chunk of percent HP damage. Um, and if you get one breakthrough on him, that percent HP damage can even become an execute if they fall below the percent HP. Um, and then in addition to that, he has a nice detonator combo range and a passive on his equipment that when you're doing Spire content or like any pure Thunder team can really stack up for a lot of extra defense, a lot of extra attack, and a good more hit on his active skill when you do use it. In the same vein of good all Thunder units, Tessa as a four star punches way above her weight and deals a lot of damage if you put her as the captain of an all thunder team where she can do her chain combo often and all of the active skills also give her stacks for her active skill and the extra damage that it deals this is a deceptively powerful unit in the four star category and one that you should very much invest in as soon as you get her because you will continue to get value out of her well into the late game. Odie is a very, very special mention here because she is an all-in-one poison proccing machine and the percent HP damage that she consistently ap applies each round really adds up. And so she can be a powerful anti-boss tool, but I can't stress enough, I don't recommend investing in her immediately. She is a unit that if you invest in her, you will continue to get value, which is the theme of this video. So I kind of included her as a special mention here. Next, we have some standalone utility units that I've personally gotten a lot of value on throughout the game. Uh, first up is Narxel. Narxel is a pretty good teleport unit. Can't complain. Does everything you want. Buffs your team as well. Most importantly, she provides a utility with um, cleansing broken tiles that doesn't come up often, but when it does, you are really happy to have a unit like Narxel there to take care of them. So if you're running, if you're looking to build a forest team, and you need her as just a teleporter. She is someone who is safe to invest in because you will always get value out of that utility she provides fixing tiles. Passalo is probably my favorite budget converter because kind of like how Scare does defense ignoring damage, which makes her gives her a little more value. Passalo is bleed damage, which is percent HP damage as long as you maintain the dot. And can really help out a team. Additionally, she gets to choose where to place an enhanced tile if you have her breakthroughs, 
which really helps a lot of the strategies that forest has because a lot of forest relies on enhanced tiles uh, to be as effective as possible. Uh, next I have Brock. Brock is an awesome utility unit. Uh, his active skill lets you kind of vacuum up all the small mobs and get them nice and close. Then you can use some local converters and deal a bunch of damage to units that would normally be too spread out to really maximize your damage. Really good in fire teams because right now fire does not have a lot of hit the four or five nearest enemy kind of attacks. They have they have sniper attacks, but they tend to be a little bit range limited. And so this is a great way to fill that niche by using your detonators and having the enemy come to you. Miss Blanc is a, another valuable early unit that you actually just get from the game and is a strong converter. She's a local converter that has the limitation of only doing the four closest tiles, which if all of those are not blue tiles, that's not really that much of a downside, but it's, she is a little more limited than Klecken or Serio. I haven't used Miss Blanc. The beginner bundle uh, converter that I got was Serial, and so I didn't really need her as much. But that being said, I do see the value in her, and if you don't have many other water converters, Miss Blanc is a great unit to use. Our last category is kind of a, a strange one because it's a bunch of units that I see get used a lot, and so I want to include in my video, but I can't really say a lot because I haven't used them personally. Um, these are damage units. These are Korax, Leona, Kafka, Nails, and Patty and Patsy. Kind of in that order too, as far as effectiveness, I would say. But I still wanted to include them on the list because if you're just looking to start your first team, this is a safe place to get like an A1 or an A2 and help you carry a bit until you get something that hits harder. And finally, because I honestly almost forgot, because this is a very, very niche uh, special mention, and it is Chandra, who honestly does not put out the best damage. Um... But if you're, I mean, early on, you don't get a lot of choice. You Early on, you work with what you got. And if what you got is Chandra, the reason that you will continue to get value out of Chandra is because of how her active skill works and how the Nitium resource raid works with the bonus stage that procs lots of ads that uh, you get money each time you hit, and they're all forest. And so she is the queen of Nightium farming. Um, you will not probably use her to clear content later in the game, but if she is an early unit you use, you will continue to get value out of her specifically farming Nightium later in the game. Thanks again for watching uh, another one of my guide videos for Alchemy Stars. Uh, special shout out here in the background this time around. I've been using the uh, Alchemy Stars database that Chloen Lansfiel has set up for us. Hopefully I pronounced that right. I'm not sure. Um, this is an amazing resource to use as you are discovering new units in the game and you're wondering hey, I don't really know if this is any good or not. It's a great place to look at how the unit uh, evolves through breakthroughs and ascensions and equipment skills and plan if this is something you can see yourself using in the future. I really recommend checking out this site um, as you're playing Alchemy Stars and learning all the units. Uh, anyway, again, like I said at the top of this video, this is not an all-encompassing guide, and so if you have any comments you would like to leave to help uh, new players invest in units that you think will really help them as they uh, start and transition to the mid and late game, please share your thoughts and opinions in the comment section so we can create a nice resource for new people as they enter the game. And until next time, thank you very much. 